Right, this is what I'm building next. It's a porch canopy. It's going to be double Roman tiles on here. Braces. I'm going to build first. Is this brace? Two of them. It's 4x3. I might reduce this one. This is 4x3 as well, but I might reduce that a little bit. It's bricked in. It's I'm going to chop a hole in the brickwork so it's going to run straight through there and then part of me wants to put a decent joint in there but I don't want to compromise the strength of this by chopping into there so I think I'm just going to screw that through there then this will get bolted back to the wall this main beam, this cross beam goes right across there, that's 4 by 3 the span between the two is 2260. To work out the span of a floor joist, you half it and add an inch, or divide it by 20 and add 20 in the metric. So 2260 is 1130, which is a bit more than 4 inch. And I've got 4 inch there, but I'm using 3 inch timber. That calculation for floor joists is for 2 inch timber, so I think that should be okay. This brace, I need wider timber and it's going to be three inch thick that way. And it's going to be three inch thick that way. This is four inch across here, that's going to be three. So I've got a piece of nine by three for that. That's rough sawn, so I'll have to plane that flat. And there's going to be little, little tenons in the end of these. And I think I'll leave that square a little bit. I don't think I'll take the curve right to the point because that'll feather and weather. So I'll leave that a little bit square. On the roof here, there's matchboard. There's no boarding going on underneath. You'll see the rafters. So I've got 3v2 planed PSC stuff for that. So I have to make these joints nice and neat. And like I say, there's matchboard on these, so when you lock up, you just see the matchboard running through. And I'm limited there as to how much I can raise it by. So what I did first was drew this, then I altered that to get the pitch right. Minimum pitch for these tiles is 30 degrees. I've set it about 35, which is about the same as the house, 35 to 40 is houses, I think. And then I raise this. So it shouldn't cover too much of the front of the lintel of the house. And the door's down here. So I'm going to build that first. So, no shelf here. Got a nice wide board. It's going to be the fascia. I'll need to rip that down but I'll do that to whatever size I need. 3x2 foot rafters and this is the 9b3. See it's all cut like that. So you, a lot of the boards were crap. I picked the best out for that. Match board to go underneath. That's the off cut off that one. So I had to buy a 4.8 meter length. And then 4 by 3 for the braces and the rafter. So I'll pick the nicest one for the rafter. They've both got a bit of a bow in them. So I'll see which one's got the least knots. Knots like this you want at the top early because they're, they're breakout points. So there's a big knot there. Don't really go all the way through, but it's probably a weak point that. It's not planed all around that one, but it's quite a clean timber. So I think I'll keep that one for the rafter, for the beam. I'll keep that one for the cross beam. And cut this one up to make the make the braces. And then up there there's a bit of tile button. 
these are the tiles that are going to go on it. I've done some roofing in the past but not a lot so I bought three of these. They're heavy. I bought three of them so I could lay them out, get me sizes. So what I've got here is two timbers for the top and two that are going to be on the wall. That one's got a big knot in it so I'll put that on the back. But these two, very few knots, are going to be built into the brickwork 100mm. Put a bit of a champ from one end. Right, so now I've got that. I'm just going to reduce this a little bit. Not much. Well, that much. So I just ran them two through the planer to remove the saw marks. I want the nice side out. So that's going to go like that. So got 100 mil mark there. Getting bricked in 100 mil. Beyond that, you start going into the cavity. It's a normal house bricks, only 100 mil wide. 110, something like that. Like I said, I don't want to compromise that timber there, because that's going to be want to snap at that point. So I've got the longest screws I've got. They're going to go down there. Right, so I've drilled through there, put a nice big counter sink on the other side, so I'm going to fill that. I don't want water or anything sitting on there once it's built. These screws, I don't know if you can see that, the posi drive screws. They've got the main cross and then they've got another cross. This one's a three point bit. Most of the screws that I use are two point. Says on it, Posi 3, this will. Phillips screws are different, they're just across. You need to know the difference, that's what destroys most screwdrivers. Posi screwdrivers are as deep. See, they've got a slight flat bottom to them. See, that's a Posi 2 with the extra little, extra little star pieces on the edge. Posi 3 has the same, little extra star pieces and it's blunt. I'll probably put some glue on these joints once it's built but for now I'll just make a dry assembly.
Right, now I've got that. I want this to be at 45 degrees, so... I want the brace to finish about here. So... Say 550. I'll measure down there. 550. That's not bad. From there to there, it's about 900 mil, so I'll cut a piece of wood that big. And it's that rough saw and stuff, so I've got to plane it flat. Right, big ass piece of wood. Quite a heavy chunk. I'm going to cut it about here. That's. So I need 900. So I'm going to cut it about here. And I should be able to get another 900 in, in there, up to there. That knot, will, that knot will probably get cut out. It's quite clean on the other side. This is the worst side. And I'll be able to avoid those. So, so I'll cut this down. Uh, this wood's got a bit of a twist to it. So anything like this, I'm just going to take it steady. Back the saw off if need to be. Make sure that my fingers are out of the way in case it kicks. Right, so now I've got two pieces that I need to plane flat. It's got a bit of a bow on it, a bit of a, a cup to it. It's because of the way it's cut. But my planer, these are these are nine inch boards. My planer's only six inch, so first of all I'm gonna run a straight edge on there and then take one cut, fix a piece of ply, and then put it through the thicknesser like I did on the gate. Right, now I've got two flat faces, and it's sort of square to that edge, but that doesn't matter. I've got two flat faces on these. You screw on a piece of board. Board's the same thickness all the way through. So now I've got two flat sides. It should, should go together quite well. It shouldn't be twisted. Now I can plane that off, run that on the bed of the plane. Now I've got two sides that are plain straight and true, there's no twist in them. I'll plane that side that I planed before, I'll plane that square to the face here, rip them down to the same width so they're both the same width and then run them over the planer just so I've got a nice square board.
See that one's a bit lower. See that one's a bit lower. I've got a bit of damage on here. So I'll set the saw to that size. So now I have two boards, same size, no twist in them, playing pretty flat. And playing flat, straight. I want to put a chamfer on this bottom end and if enough boom to get a bolt in at the bottom there. I'm going to put another bolt up here into the brick wall. So. Work out where to make me cut. If you think of a brace as a, I'll just use this. Imagine a two-inch piece of timber. That'd probably be enough for a brace. So these extra bits of cut, these extra bits of curve, uh, they're just fancy unless I can find a, a curved timber which I haven't got. So that'll be the main part of the brace that's doing all the work and then the curves will be extra these will be you know cut across the grain so there'll be short grain here so there's no strength in that really and this piece isn't pressing against anything it's stiffening the brace maybe but so what i need to do is work out where i want that and then i can work out my curve I sit that there. I'm just going to use this as a measuring tool, I think. I've got a bendy piece of wood just to. I don't want much of a curve on it, so probably that again. I'll put a little pencil mark there. And, there. and while it's a square piece of wood, I think I'm going to cut these ends. Right, I just marked out that little bit, then I know that that's the outside. I want a tenon on the end, oh, 20 mil, not much, an inch maybe. Right, this piece of off cut just, just happens to be an inch, so I'm going to lay that along there, mark it off. I'm going to cut it to that line at 45 degrees. Right, I really need a new camera. I cut a 45 on there to the mark that I made. And I cut the other one as well. So this has got a 45 on one end, but it's still square on the other. So from this one that I've got all my marks on, I'll flip it around. I'll cut that, but I'll put a stop at the other end so that the other one, when I cut it, will be exactly the same. So I've got that lined up. That's where I want it. And set a stop at this end. I'm going to have to move you.
it don't cut quite all the way. If I took the fences off it would, but... Now this one I can set that up to the stop that I put. Right, so I've set the depth to that on my, on my saw, and then I'll make this cut for my shoulder. The saw probably won't reach this far, it'll only cut up to about there, and then it'll curve up, same on the back. But I'm more interested in these pieces in the middle. So I'll set my saw to that shoulder there. Put a stop on that. Right, I can flip it over and do the other end. So I'm going to carefully square them over. Sharp pencil. I only need to do one because all the others will be the same. So that's my line. Squared it over. And cut to that line. I'll set a stop up. You see it lifts up at either end, so now I can use that for my depth, my table saw. It's a bit deeper than I wanted actually. This is as shallow as the depth setting on the chop saw will do, it's a shame that. But I've got that set to that width, so now I can set it to that depth. Uh, that's quite a lot thinner than I wanted. I wanted a little bit thicker like that. Never mind. Be okay. But I'm not happy with the thickness of that tenon, but I'm going to go with it. Now I'm going to take that corner off and I want the curve to come in about here, like that. So I'm going to make a template to go on top of here, cut a piece of board the same as this.